This video is sponsored by Squarespace, where you can create your own professional online presence with a beautiful website. Hello, wonderful humans, and welcome back to The Bliss Bean. In a recent video, I shared how I use different digital planning tools to organize my life, and that was a pretty long video, but I actually still had a lot more to say about how I manage my content calendar. So in this video, we are going to talk about how to be a professional blogger with a professional content calendar. So first of all, a content calendar is just a schedule of what content you're going to publish on your blog. So if you have a blog, you're probably managing a lot of different channels. You've got a blog post here, a video there, a newsletter, pins, tweets, Instagram stories peppered throughout. It's a lot. And unless you're one of those effortlessly cool people who lives a super spontaneous life and is always taking cute aesthetic photos and never runs out of ideas, you're gonna want a way to plan all of that out in advance so that you can tie all of your content together. So for example, say you have a video coming out in two weeks and then the week before that, you want to tease it on Instagram. You want to include a link to the video in a newsletter that's going out a few days later. You want to promote it again on all of your channels a month after it goes live. I don't know how anyone could remember to do all of that without a content calendar. Now, a lot of people think that being really organized is going to kill your creativity, but in reality, it actually helps me to be more creative because I have a system to capture every idea that I come up with and actually make it happen. Someone asked me how I make sure to have enough flexibility in my content calendar so that I can still do spontaneous things, and the answer to that is that I use a digital calendar. So let's move on to the next section. There are so many different tools that you can use for planning a content calendar. I've seen people do it on paper, on spreadsheets. There's tons of different apps out there. The one that I personally like to use is called Trello. Trello is based on the Kanban system and Kanban comes from the Japanese kan meaning sign and pan meaning board. So the Kanban board system was developed in the early 1940s to help make production at Toyota more efficient. So generally you would have a project on each card and then the columns are used to track the progress of that project from stage one to completion. But what I use the columns for is just categorizing the different types of content that I have. So in Trello, you can drag and drop cards between columns and each card can contain tons of different information like checklists, labels, due dates, attachments, etc. Currently, I use the free version because with the free version, you're allowed to have one free power up and the only power up that I use is the calendar one. So you can definitely have a fully functional content calendar without paying anything on Trello. So basically, I have one card for every piece of content that goes out. So anytime I want to create something new, I will create a card from a template. The template for videos is definitely the most complicated, so let's get that out of the way first. I read the script in Google Drive because it would take up way too much space if I put it in the card itself. So instead what I have here are these little headings for me to make note of any ideas that I have for the video. So how am I going to integrate that week's sponsor into the video? What's the thumbnail going to look like? The intro, any ideas for how to edit the video, promote the video, etc. Is there going to be a worksheet that goes with it or anything like that? What cards am I going to use throughout the video to link to other videos? and what do I need to make sure to include in the description when I'm writing that out. So this first checklist of things to do is stuff that is specifically related to working with a sponsor. So when a video is sponsored, I write out the plan for the social media posts, the video script, the pinned comment, etc., in advance so that I can send that for approval along with the video itself before it goes live. In terms of actually creating the video, well, you gotta write your script, plan out what B-roll shots you're gonna have, Film it, edit it, upload it to YouTube, get that all filled out and ready to go with the tags, the end screen, the cards, etc. Design all of your graphics, blah, blah, blah. And then one thing I do for every single video that I upload is I make a blog post for it. So if you guys watched my video two weeks back on how I started the Bliss Feed and my blogging journey, you'll know that I started out only doing blog posts and it wasn't until the Bliss Feed was about a year old when I started doing YouTube videos but I still post every single video that I upload onto my Squarespace website. 
why even if your space is just on youtube or just on instagram having one place to consolidate all of that is a really awesome way to establish a professional online presence a lot of times if there's someone on instagram i admire i will google their name and see if they have a website somewhere where i can learn more about them and just see what other things they're doing i can be nosy like that and companies and people will be nosy about you so you want to make sure that you are prepared for that and that you have your best most professional foot forward Forward. So my Squarespace site is kind of the hub of all things Blissbean. It has my videos, my newsletter, all my worksheets, links to my social media, etc. So every time I'm uploading a new video, I go to my Squarespace dashboard and I open up my blog page. I duplicate the previous post so that I can use it as a template and then I just change the title to the title of the new video. The Squarespace editor is just this super simple block structure. So I have an image block, a video block, a button block to take people to my YouTube channel so they can watch more videos and hopefully fall down the Blissbean rabbit hole. Then there is a text block, a newsletter block, and a summary block that shows people some of my more recent stuff. So all I do, this literally takes just a few minutes, is I drop in the new graphics, the video link, I usually copy in just whatever I wrote in the description and clean it up a little bit, and then I can schedule the post, which is really nice because I can schedule it for the exact time that the video is scheduled for so that they go up simultaneously. So whether you want to start a blog Blog, or you already have a YouTube channel or a social media presence, but you just want to step it up and have that go-to professional place on the internet that says to the internet, this is what I am, this is what I do, and I'm really good at what I do. You can go to the link in my description for a free trial and then use my code THEBLISSBEAN to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So then once the video is published on my YouTube channel and on my website, I have to promote the video. So all of these tasks are pretty self-explanatory. And then these two lists are for when I'm planning out my B-roll shots. So after I write my script, I kind of go through it and I try to imagine how the video will look in my head. What visuals do I want to have alongside what I'm saying? What B-roll am I gonna have to film? And then what B-roll do I know I already have in my vast archive of B-roll footage on my hard drives that I just need to go and find? And the reason I love doing this on Trello is because I can drag and drop these. So after I've written my shot list, I can put it in order of how how I plan on filming it. So let's say there is a shot at the beginning of the video of something on my computer screen, and then there's a shot at the end of the video of something on my computer screen. So it only makes sense to film those two at the same time. Here at the Bliss Bean, we like to work smarter, not harder, friends. My newsletter template is super simple. I use the description to draft out the content. I have space here to write down what my little piece of actionable advice and what my five recommendations for the week are gonna be. So at any point in the week, if I think of something that I want to recommend in my next newsletter, or even a newsletter a few weeks out, all I have to do is go to that card and type it in there, and then I can just forget about it. For the to-do list, gotta write it in Google Docs, format the email, design the graphic, and add it to the archive. Instagram posts are also generally really simple. Usually it's just a write caption, take photo, edit photo. Instagram success is as easy as one, two, three. If I have to design a graphic or do some prep work in advance, I can add that. And then in the description is where I write the caption and also just a quick description of what the photo will be. And if I don't know yet, just question marks. I got a question about whether I schedule my social media posts. So I do not. I do schedule my YouTube videos and blog posts. I do use a feed planning app, but only to check if the photo that I'm about to upload will look good against my feed and then I can make adjustments if it doesn't quite match. But honestly, I don't think my feed is that cohesive anyways, but it's okay. Instagram stories are even more simple. I usually don't even have a checklist, so really the card is just there to remind me that I need to post something. But also most of my stories are spontaneous because I feel like that's just kind of the point of Instagram stories. It's a more casual way to share. So having all these cards is all good and fun, but what is it? Is it just like a jumble of cards? How do you organize these cards, Patrice? So each card is assigned to a column, and as I mentioned, I have a column for each type of content and then one column for behind the scenes reminders and stuff like that. I usually have the card sorted by due date, so then I can look at this and be like, okay, these are the next few newsletters coming up, these are the next few videos coming up, this is what I need to focus on. You don't have to have a due date assigned to a video, which is nice, because say you film a video and you're not sure when you want to post it, you don't have to pick a day, but you can still see it alongside the rest of your video cards. Personally, I don't even use the column layout that much, so I mentioned that I use the calendar power-up instead. If I click up here, it'll show me all of my cards 
on the due date that they're assigned to. Having these color labels makes it really easy to see what's what. So aside from labeling the type of content that it is, I also have an orange label for stuff that's related to the book club, which you should join. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, link is in the description. And then dark blue for stuff related to my 21 days to productive flow course, which you can also check out. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then aqua is for sponsors. So you can have multiple labels under the same color. Usually I do have them minimized because I just want to see which video has a sponsor but if I do want to see who exactly the sponsor is or if I happen to forget what the rest of the labels mean then I can just click to expand them okay okay Patricia so that's what your calendar looks like but how does the planning actually happen the title said how I plan my content calendar and we feel kind of clickbaited do not worry, that is the next section of the video. So the key to the system actually working is setting aside time to do that creative work of planning, writing captions, brainstorming ideas, etc, etc. And most of that work happens within my weekly vlog tasks. So I have a card for this process each weekend and it goes in the behind the scenes column. So on Saturday, I will take a look at the outlines for my next two newsletters, I'll add any ideas, Oftentimes I end up almost writing the entire newsletter in there, so by the time Monday rolls around, I don't have very much to do. I'll glance over my calendar for the next month or two, see what videos are coming up. I'll work on planning out in detail what the next week's calendar will look like, so working on captions, coming up with new ideas, making sure that everything is cohesive together and makes sense. I'll check off all of the tasks that have been done, do some brainstorming for content ideas based on things I've been learning about or that have captured my interest lately or that people have asked to see videos about. I also use this time to plan out any photos that I might need to shoot for upcoming posts. So I have this card here that just kind of floats around the board. It has two checklists. So photos that I need to shoot and then the photos that I plan on shooting the next time I have a little photo taking session. And anytime I finish one of these, it gets hidden so that the list doesn't get cluttered up. Again, I am not a cute spontaneous photo person, so I need a plan. And like I said at the beginning of the video, having that plan doesn't necessarily squash my creativity or anything like that. It really only helps because with this list, I can set aside a few hours of time to take photos and just be purely creative and really think about the props that I'm using and the lighting and the angles and whatever. After that, it's just maintenance stuff. So answering emails, updating my media kit, checking up on statistics, repinning stuff on Pinterest, and then any little random things that I might think of. I also will use that behind the scenes column for any little reminders. So I might write something like, oh, I need to send that week's video for approval by Tuesday or I need to film my week in the life video this week or on that day there is a holiday that I want to create something about. So yeah, that is my whole system. I hope I didn't make it sound too complicated because it really isn't. It has made blogging so much easier and so much more enjoyable for me. It's so important to be organized and have a cohesive online presence as a blogger or as a business owner. So Trello helps me to figure out what I'm going to create and put out into the internet and then Squarespace helps me bring it all together in one place and have this beautiful, professional looking front page for myself on the internet. Again, there is a link in the description to try out Squarespace and you can use my code to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So please be sure to take advantage of that. If you have a system for planning out your content calendar, let us know in the comments what it is because I'm really curious to see how other people manage all of this mess that comes with vlogging. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week. Bye!